Hey friends, welcome to the Gardener's Workshop live from the farm. It's your friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and um, thanks for joining me here today. So I'm really happy to be inside. It is 97 degrees outdoors and it is a scorcher. So I'm really happy to be inside. And today I have a great um, show for you. We're gonna still be, of course, sowing our sunflower seeds. It is more important now than ever, in my opinion, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Because you know, sunflowers and fall are like my new favorite saying, peanut butter and jelly, y'all. People love to buy sunflowers in the fall. And because the, the ones that we plant, pro cuts, are only 55 to 60 days, plus maybe a smidgen longer as the days get a little shorter. That definitely messes with them a little bit. But if you have 60 to 70 days before your first expected frost, you can keep planting. We literally keep planting through the end of September because frankly, here where I am in Southeastern Virginia, um, we can get away with having them a little bit longer than we think, but we'll talk about that. So <clears throat> the other thing we're gonna talk about today is are your cool flower seeds in the freezer, y'all? And we'll look at mine. Um, plus, I'm gonna be talking about buckwheat and depending on what our time frame is, I have my um, seed spreader full right here next to me and we might just go out to the garden and I'm going I'm planting buckwheat tonight. Rain's coming. It's been hotter than heck here and dry. So I'm going to plant buckwheat seed tonight and um, I'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm hoping to go out there and actually do it. And the other thing is, because I didn't mention to you last week because I just have, my brain is cooked, y'all. <laughs> Um, I have a webinar I'm doing on Monday night that I would love to have you come. It's called Ditch the Warm. What is it called? Where is it on my list here? Ditch Warm, Think Cool Flowers. And what that means is, or what it's about, is y'all, so many of us get so eaten alive by the heat, the summer, the overwhelm, the weeds, the everything rolled together that we end up missing out on the biggest cash crop of our seasons, and that's planting cool flowers in a timely way. So that means um, you gotta like cut your losses and move on. And that's, so my talk Monday night is gonna be basically focused on that. I put at the head of this post um, the link to request the Zoom link so you can um, attend it live. I would love for you to, to come to that. And then I have something that's gonna just explode your head, y'all. So, if you're on here, you're obviously a Facebook user, right? So, in addition to all of our closed private groups that we have for our students that take our courses, the Gardener's Workshop now has three private Facebook groups. That is in addition to the page you're on right now. This is our farm page that's open to the public and um, we just do a lot of chit-chatting and sharing on this stage. But we have started three closed Facebook groups and it's for those people that are involved in flower-based businesses. So I don't wanna explode your head, but I want you guys to join. You're all invited to the appropriate group, and that's what I'm just gonna tell you in a nutshell right now. So we have three groups. One of them um, has been called, we've had it now, I guess for five or six months. Um, its name was Florist Buying Local. Well, that page, y'all, just took off like nobody's tomorrow. And it was really intended for florists that were interested in buying local flowers and learning more about that. And we invited flower farmers to come there to kind of show off their stuff, but it just kind of didn't go very well. So what happened is the florists don't come there because there's so much farmer talk. So we have separated the groups. Well, we didn't separate the groups. We've made separate pages. So if you were already a member of the florist buying local group, we renamed it today. That group now has a very descriptive name. It is Florist Farmer Connection because that's what's been going on over on that page. 
flower farmers that have product for sale or say, hey, I'm in such and such Georgia and I have these and you know, then florists that are in there that are in that region. So people are connecting and then we want you to go outside of that group to connect even further. Well, so we've renamed that group was the Florist Buying Local. It is now called Florist Dash Farmer Connection. So you can just search Facebook for it. If you're a florist or a farmer, that group can be for you. Our other two groups are specific to which you are. We have yet a new page called Florist Buying Local. Same name that other page used to have, but it is just for florists and designers, y'all. If you're a flower farmer, we don't want you over there. We want florists to have, com um, to be able to have conversations and to learn and support each other within their trade. But on the other hand, we also have a private group called the Flower Farmer Show. That is my private group. That is for flower farmers. That is for talking trade stuff. That's for talking business, talking growing. Because let me tell you what was happening in that florist buying local group. So that florist buying local group, we targeted florist, our customers, y'all. And what started happening is people started asking their customers how to do their business. You know, like, how much should I sell this for? Or what could I sell this? Or do you know what I mean? It just got into a very unprofessional kind of roll out over there and so what we are hoping to do is that that florist farmer connection page is where two business people farmers and florists can connect find out about each other and then they can connect outside of that page however they want to and y'all can have conversations over there but we don't ask our customers um you know or, and our customers don't tell us what to do. So we, um, it was crazy, crazy Teresa. And it just blossomed out of control. So we're doing our best. So you're all invited. I'm gonna say the three names again so you'll know what to search. If you're a florist or a designer, we would love to have you in our florist buying local group. Ro, if, if, anybody, if you're a designer, a, a florist, um, a florist, a designer, a farmer florist, as long as you are floristing, that's what we want because we want to have that kind of conversations over there. And Ellen Frost is the shepherd of that group. She is like the leader of this pack of, y'all, do you not, I mean, this is what I think a lot of people missed from my messaging, and I just didn't say it enough, believe it or not. I feel like I say it all the time. We are the farmers. We should like showcase the best we've got to show all these florists what buying local means. And we wanna show them that we can actually kind of sell them what they need when they need it. Um, and so what was really happening over there was not really very good. So we're trying to help. So we have the florist buying local. If you're a designer or a florist, um, have a design studio, whatever. If you're doing arrangements, if you want to buy from other farmers, if you're a farmer florist, um, or you want to buy, you, um, I'm sorry, y'all, I shouldn't be reading the comments. It just totally takes me off, but some of them are pretty funny. Um, we want you in that group. Both farmers and florists can be in that farmer flor that florist farmer connection group. And then in my group, the Flower Farmer Show, that's for people growing and selling flowers or are aspiring to. So you're, you have to answer questions. And if you answer honestly, am I aspiring or am I a designer? And you say, no, we're not gonna let you in because we're trying to purify the pool of people so we have real business conversations over there. Um, so, and with that said, the Flower Farmer Show group, which is mine, will tell you all about the live show I do every Wednesday uh, over in Clubhouse and has all those links, and I'm not gonna take up any more of our time except to say, y'all, we have one day, two days left, one day, the 15th, which is Sunday, Val's new course, Forcing Glorious Blooms for the Holidays and Beyond, goes live. That means our pre-sale ends Saturday night at midnight. Get $10 off. It's 50 bucks regular price, $40 um, on pre-sale. On pre so 
Y'all, you aren't gonna believe this course. It is so totally awesome. You think sunflowers are hot? Wait till you see what Val does with indoor blooming bulbs. Your customers will eat you up. You can take what she teaches and apply it to make them for you to sell. It's actually done for home people, home gardeners, but you'll absolutely adore it. So yes, we are still starting sunflowers, gang. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. You know, I, I run my mouth so much. Believe it or not, I forget to say things. So this week I've added a tray. So I'm doing four trays a week, y'all. That's how important fall sunflowers are. I'm actually growing more than we were. So this week I am starting, um, I'm splitting a tray. Today's the 14th. I'm gonna do gold, the gold light, which is the yellow pro cut with the green center. And I don't have enough to do a whole tray. So I'm gonna do the other half, the white mix, which is white light and white night, which is huge for fall. Um, it's kind of tough on them because the insect pressure is so bad. But anyway, we just do the best we can, y'all. And then I'm gonna be doing two trays of bouquet mix. That is the bouquet mix are the four pro cut orange based sunflowers all in one. It's orange, orange XL, horizon, and brilliance. Um, and we love them. They're our all time, that's why I made the mix. You can find all the custom mixes that we've made over on thegardenersworkshop.com. You can buy the individual colors. We have jumbo packs or you can buy mixes that I've mixed. So you can just grow them um, for bouquets. All right, gang. And we use painter's tape to mark our trays and our wonderful garden marker. This is a marker that is resistant to moisture and UV rays outside. It truly holds up over a season. Um, totally love this pen. You'll find that on our website also. So what I'm gonna do, oh, before we do that, I'm sorry, y'all. So are your cool flower seeds in the cooler, in the freezer? Mine are going in. Um, so the cool, the, the cool season hardy annual seeds that, I, that are in cool flowers don't really require what they call um, stratification or some special treatment for it to, to germinate. But I will say that I learned this tip years ago I do learn that cool season hardy annuals germinate um, a little better when I put them in the freezer for a couple of weeks. Some of them really need that, like Bells of Ireland. Um, that is part of our treatment to get, we get the best germination with Bells of Ireland. I mean, you just won't even believe it. And it's just so simple, but you just gotta follow the instructions, y'all. So, this is how we store our seeds. See this brown thing? This is the desiccant, like you get the little desiccants like you get in Tylenol, it just sucks up any moisture. Um, there's a great blog over on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, under the Learning Center, under the Field and Garden blog. Rhonda wrote it on storing seeds. Just go to seed starting and it's there. So you need an airtight container, like a Ziploc bag. I actually normally use like a two gallon bag and put them all in, but I had to use a couple of bags this year because I only have gallons but you need to put this desiccant in and then we let this sit out at room temperature for two to three days before we put them in the freezer. That allows the desiccant to work. If you put it in the freezer immediately, it can't work, it'll be frozen. Um, so this is day two, these will go in the freezer probably Monday um, and then I'm just gonna leave them in until it's time to start cool flower seeds. And in reality, but we go through so many seeds around here, um, we don't sit on big stock like we used to. Um, normally, when I purchase cool flower seeds, we would just add them to a bag, let them sit out, and put them right in the freezer. So they'll stay in the freezer for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's not a problem. Um, you'll also find those desiccants on our website if you need them. It's just super convenient to have what you need. So these guys, a desiccant is, it takes the moisture out of the air. That's why you get it in when you buy a pair of tennis shoes. It's in the product, it's in the product box. Um, it's that little packet of gel-like, they're not gel, they're hard, but they absorb moisture. Moisture and heat are what are the death of seed, y'all. That's what takes their viability um, away. So you need to get your seeds in the freezer if you haven't already done that. All right, gang. 
let's get down to some seed starting. So we use painter's tape after one of our wonderful followers turned us on that masking tape is what I've always used on trays. We use them on cafeteria trays, um, and we also use them um, on these plug trays, which you'll have a better view of them in just a minute here. So I have written, let me pull off last, just pulling off the old tape. It gets really confusing. If you have other people planting flats of anything or trays of soil blocks on your farm, it is really, in my opinion, essential to either put your tape on top of the old tape or just pull it off because people get really confused. I would be confused. So here's one from, that was from April and look how good you can still read it. All right, so the tape is off. So I'm gonna pop off, the very first one I'm gonna do is that tray that I have to do half and half. So I grow pro cuts. Um, I have grown them for years. They're quick. They have a great color selection. Many of them are um, powdery mildew resistant, um, or mildew resist, oh, sorry y'all, kinda kicked you, didn't I? Um, and they have great colors. Their necks are stiff in the oranges. The colors, the fancy colors as I call them, typically have soft necks. And that's in any fancy colors, not just pro cuts. Um, they are, that is across the board. So gang, I'm gonna bring y'all down a little bit here. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I'm not branded in my clothing today, because let me tell you something. Those polo shirts, even though they're that super lightweight fabric that have our company name on it, they're too hot. Because I'm gonna go out and plant cover crop, I have on this really lightweight cotton shirt. So, all right, first, so, if you're just joining us here for the first time, I'm gonna just talk you through what we do for sunflowers um, and the process, and then I'll chat about other things. So we plant sunflowers every single week, starting about five weeks before our last frost. We plant them, in, we start them indoors, which is the way that is less labor intensive. You get a better stand of plants. Um, it's not quite as easy as some people seem to think to direct seed stuff outside. You have to really do a lot of watering. You have to protect from the varmints. Um, and we just find doing transplants, which is what most commercial growers do. Um, so we start them indoors once a week so that we will have a constant supply of sunflowers. And I'm speaking to you as someone that has had no sunflowers this week or last week. Um, we had a couple of hiccups, and I can't tell you how painful it was making bouquets without sunflowers. You just, they just, really, you really wanna stick to your schedule. So, we start them every week so that we'll have sunflowers to cut every week. When you do that, you always wanna need, you always wanna stick with the same variety every week because if you change variety, see some pro cuts are 55 to 60 days, um, there are some flowers, some sunflowers, y'all, that are 70 to 90 days from seed to bloom. So think how that would screw you up if you started all of a sudden in the middle planting um, a different variety and then all of a sudden you're gonna hit a week where you don't have any sunflowers. And I can't tell you how painful it is. So we plant typically the bouquet mix, which is that one I was speaking of that is has the four different oranges, we plant that every single week, so that's our constant. We do vary the colors on the other pro cuts because it can actually screw up the timing just by a couple of days, but sometimes, depending on weather and what's going on, that can really mess you up. Um, so the key is that if you are doing a farmer's market or if you do a lot of subscriptions or bouquet businesses, you've got to have sunflowers every week, y'all. So you can see that I'm just dropping one onto the surface of each of each cell. Um, and so I'm gonna, now, whoop, I can get the package open. So that was the white mix that finished that off. So let's get rid of those. So we use these 128 plug trays. You can also find these on our website if you need them. Um, and 
What's in the plug tray is a 50-50 mix of any potting soil and finished compost. You can buy compost in bags. I mean, you can get a dump truck load of it too, um, but you can find it in bags. That's what we do. I just always try to keep five or six bags here for Bobo to mix with um, whatever potting soil mix we have on hand. So this is very different than the blocking mix that we use for soil blocking. The reason that we don't um, soil block sunflowers is because it would take the larger blocker and that is just super um, labor intensive and it's not needed. It takes a lot of soil um, and let's see, what am I doing now? Wait a minute, sorry y'all, let me think for a minute. Bouquet mix. Um, so that is why we do not soil block sunflowers. The seed is so big, it would require the larger block. And so now we're doing more pro cuts. Mix, I'm sorry, bouquet mix. Um, so you fill your trays with that potty mix and then you're gonna do what I'm doing and drop one seed on the top of each cell and as you just saw me do previously, I then just go through and put my fingers on top of the seed and just push it about halfway down in the cell. Now, sunflowers germinate best when they're covered with soil. And if you looked down in those cells right now, you would see that you could still see the seed down in there when I pushed it in. But once I take this into our grow room and water the tray in really well with a watering can with a little sprinkler head on it, that washes the soil off the walls and covers the seeds. So it works out really good. So don't be making any extra steps to try to cover your seeds. You do not need to do that. So here's what I wanna share what's been happening. So two weeks ago, I had spotty germination. And I really blamed that on, and it could be true, I blame that on, we had a run of rainy days and like, I mean, we had days of 68 degrees. That's like just, I mean, unheard of. We're used to 98 degree days this time of the year. So I don't think that what I call my, my grow room got warm enough. Because that room does get so very hot during the day, we've always been able to put our trays on the floor and it would germinate them. So that's what happened the first week. Now, we've gone and the whole the pendulum has swung all the way to the other side now it is so hot outside and we've been keeping the door shut that room is getting so hot that i think it's impeded germination because it's so hot in there so the moral to this story is that most of you don't have a room like me where it gets so much sun and has grow lights and heat mats in there and that's what really heats it up um, the moral of the story is, is that I now need to leave that grow room door open so it's normal temperature. We keep this building at between, you know, 68 and 72 degrees and put my sunflowers on a seedling heat mat as everybody should, right? So that's what's gonna happen with these. Um, all right, so let me, I took too many seeds out. So I'm gonna do what I was just telling you. I'm just placing my finger on top of that seed and just pushing it in halfway. And as you can see, it's not a real exact science at all. And so I'll put them on the seedling heat mat after I water them. And once 75, 50 to 75% of these guys show signs of sprouting. I'm not talking about growing up. I'm talking about you see the little necks coming up. Um, then we will, you, you can do one of two things. If you have grow lights available and you wanna get them a little bigger before you put them outside to face the elements, um, you can do that. Or I usually take them straight from that 75, 50 to 75% sprouting right out onto our porch where they will, um, get be out in full sun and um, just start watering them. So we will water them every morning while they're in the trays. They get ultimately planted outdoors in the garden when they're two to three weeks old. And when you, how do you know when to plant them? 
when we give that transplant a little tug and the entire cell comes up, I mean, there is none of this, oh, I'm going to rip the roots from the stem business. Um, you're looking for a nice little hardy transplant. And if you are having issues with not a great root ball and you feel like you're going to rip the roots or the stem from the roots, that is a rooting problem. That is usually from growing conditions, either not enough heat usually a lot of times um, can cause that. So we plant them when they're two to three weeks old and we plant them into 30 inch wide beds and you can plant them four to five rows. We have found, um, and I agree with Emily now, Emily shared with us um, that she had been doing that for a while and she saw no difference in the size of the blooms and I have to agree. So that means you can get a whole nother row of sunflowers in, which is another reason I'm starting an extra tray here. Won't take up any more space. Um, so we plant four rows to a 30, four to five rows to a 30 inch bed. The plants are six inches apart in the row. We do not use the Bio 360 on those beds. We do not use irrigation. We plant into open soil with beds that have been, um, had our organic um, dry fertilizer, which you can find that on our website now. It's a chicken litter based organic certified fertilizer and um sorry y'all having to look at what i'm doing bobo may mix new soil and there's a lot of perlite in this soil i don't know what it is um but it's very distracting i can't quite tell where i have and haven't put a seed um so we bobo will plant the transplants according to what i just told you then she literally hands waters them in with a wand. Doesn't take long at all. She makes sure that every plant gets a good, long, deep drink. And literally, because we do get regular rain here in southeastern Virginia, they literally do not get watered again unless we have an extended period of time of no rain. And people don't always believe that that's what we do, but I'm here to tell you that's exactly what we do. Um, and it's all about, we do have great soil, we get rain pretty often, so if you're in a droughty area, don't think that's gonna work for you and you don't have, you know, you haven't been working on your soil for 60 years like we have here. Literally, Steve's grandpa did it before I got here. Um, so that works really well for us. And we plant, normally when we you were in high production, we would plant 1,200 10 trays a week the trays each have 128 cells in them. And, but now we've been doing three trays a week, but now that we're heading into fall, you know, the demand for flowers, of course, is the highest in spring. The second highest demand is in the fall. So we do not want to be short of sunflowers. And I will tell you that the pest pressure is tougher in late summer and the fall. You know, the grasshoppers are here. Um, it's just kind of, and the rabbits have reproduced like blooming crazy. Now, what am I doing? Let's see. Sunfill. So let me tell you about the Sunfill sunflower. I don't know if there's one over there. Um, you know, our members only market picked up this morning and we always make two bouquets extra. Let me see. Oh, there is one. So here's one of the bouquets that was left over, and this is the sunfill. See, you don't see any yellow petals. Petals. Look how nice of texture that really is. Um, so sunfill is grown for this while it still has all of its, um, you know, the little outer leaves of the bud going in there. And I can't tell you guys how helpful that is. It's like the the filler greens that we've all been asking for all this time that you can actually time it, meaning you can plant them every week so you have some every week. Um, and the girls really love using them for bouquets because, sorry, y'all, wait a minute. I'm just looking at what I'm, what I'm messing up here. Um, you can never have enough texture and 
Um, so anyway, so that's what this is, sun filled green, and it is just like Pro Cuts. It's about 55 to 60, or actually 50 to 55 days. It's even a little bit sooner. Um, and this is the green sun fill. There is a purple, and that just means there's just a purple brush. It's not purple foliage, it's green with a purple edges, you might say. And to be honest, what is the number one thing as making bouquets that most of us struggle with, even if you don't know that you're struggling with it yet, is dark bouquets. People want bright, popping, hot colors. As much as we all want to resist that and use those beautiful, sweet blushes and, you know, that is not what... Look at the grocery stores, y'all. Look at those ugly, dyed flowers. That's the number one selling flower at grocery stores. I mean, we can't help it if people don't have, you know. Anyway, I won't even say that. So, what are the people going for? They're going for bright colors. So, that's why I don't use any of the dark flowers. And we don't use, I mean, it's like there are some really gorgeous Rebeccas that are dark. Well, unfortunately, most Rebeccas for us bloom in the spring and early summer. And that is not the time of year that people are looking, you know, we'll, we would use some of those in the fall if we had them. But we get that effect with growing bicolored sunflowers. It is a whole lot easier to deal with. But friends, I'm telling you, just because we, I grow what sells, not what I like. And so I just wanted to say that that's why we grow the sun-filled green. It's got lighter foliage. Um, it's got a, sl a yellow green kind of center and it really really works great and I will come back at the end here and do a Q&A and if we get done in time then I will take you guys with me um, as I use my bag spreader to spread my buckwheat seed um, so I'll just talk about buckwheat for just a minute buckwheat is a warm season tender annual cover crop we love it because it is quick to go from seed to bloom, which is about 30 to 40 days, depending on your weather. And you always should incorporate cover crops when they're, when they're at their most beautiful, actually, when they're in full bloom, because that's when they're the most tender and fleshy and they break down the quickest. They haven't, they haven't made seed. They haven't dropped seed to create, become a menace. Um, in the garden. So I have several areas on the farm that um, I'm holding for cool flowers basically, but it's way too early for cool flowers. So what do I wanna do with that spot while we wait? Let's see, this is mid-August. I mean, we're looking at mid-October. So I'm gonna plant buckwheat so that A, it's gonna add organic matter to the soil when we turn it. It'll provide blooms for the pollinators. The, the little baby bunnies just adore it. Um, I feel like I'm raising baby bunnies here, y'all. You just can't believe how many baby bunnies there are there. And they see Tucker, and they like, oh, hi, Tucker. <laughs> there is no chasing anymore, it seems like. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna plant the buckwheat, and you have to cover the buckwheat seed, just like this, these sunflowers have got to have, be covered to germinate best. Cover crop seed is that way too. It needs to be covered with about a half an inch of soil. And so this is what my spreader looks like. It's just a bag and it's got a strap. You'll see me put it on out there. Um, it just goes across my shoulder and I turn it um, and we'll do that out there. Um, it just really helps you to distribute the seed a lot more evenly. Um, if you have a small garden, you can throw it down. You just tend to throw down more than you really need a lot of times, and then you have to rake it. I'll run a tiller over it lightly, um, and then that will go. And then with the rain coming, this stuff, maybe, I'm not gonna say for sure, but maybe by next Friday, that stuff will be that tall. Um, and it is beautiful, y'all. And it just, it suppresses weeds, it adds organic matter, um, and it mines nutrients, meaning excess nutrients that are in the soil sometimes. Um, it sucks them up and then you put them back in. I mean, there's just so, cover crop is a very deep subject and it's very confusing to most people. That's why I say, and in my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, 
I talk about this because and share how home gardeners with no equipment even can plant buckwheat in the summer and crimson clover, which is a cool season. You plant it in fall like you do cool flowers. Um, both of them are great learn to know cover crop crops. But what happens is when people go to order these out of these big supply catalogs that have lots of different cover crops, people buy different types and they all have different problems, different needs, different situations, meaning many of them, you have got to have big bush hogs or mowers or something to take it down. They're very vigorous. Um, so cover crop gets a bad rap. Buckwheat is so simple, y'all. Everybody ought to have buckwheat sitting and ready to throw in their garden at any time. All right, so now what I want to do, I'm just looking around trying to figure out. So I'm going to pick you up. Stand by, y'all. Pick you up and knock you into stuff. So I'm going to look at the questions. And then, what time is it? And then we will go outside and I will plant buckwheat. So if you have questions, put them on there now, right? Okay, gosh, it's hot in here and the air conditioner is blowing. Um, it was 97. Um, I can't tell you how going out early in the morning, like we started harvesting yesterday, Bobo and I did. Um, I started at six, getting the buckets full. So when she got here at 6.30, we hit the ground running. We were done harvesting by 10 a.m. Um, and I mean, at 10.30, it was unbearable out there. Y'all, you just have to get up early it's worth it but you got to finish early hey everybody so i think so I, I think i already answered this and yes if you are a farmer florist truly doing events doing design work um, we would love to have you join the florist buying local group um, what we don't want is farmers over there picking the brains of florist florist Y'all, here's what I think a lot of people don't understand. The whole point of the farmer buying local and the whole point that we publish an online course with Ellen Frost is we're trying to help florists learn why they need to buy local flowers, how the benefits, how they can do it, how they can connect. Y'all, we're training them to be flower farmer customers. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like we have to educate them. And so the number one thing that flower farmers can do is to tell your florist customers, hey, there's this great group that's for florists. I'm not in there because I'm not a florist, but it's about you know tips and tricks and how to do buying more local and how to use them and how to expect, you know, what to expect. And I mean, Ellen is such a great teacher. And um, I mean, we were talking about this this morning as we were doing this crazy split in the groups. And y'all, it's like I still haven't communicated that clearly to the farmers. The whole point of what we're doing is we want to get all the customers, your customers, the florist, to join these groups so we can enlighten them on how they can buy local, why they want to buy local, and then how, I mean, their challenges that they think they have how to overcome that. So the number one thing that farmers can do is to tell their florist, there is this great group about using, buying and using locally grown flowers. I'm not in there because I am not a florist, I'm a farmer. And that will intrigue them because they wanna talk to other people doing what they're doing. They don't wanna listen to a bunch of farmer talk. Do you see what I mean? So yes, join it. Yeah, herding the cats, that's it for sure. Hi from Alaska, hello Wanda. She's getting ready for market. Cindy said, you said it enough, people are bad listeners. I'm a saint, I am not a saint. I do my ranting, but I do it when I'm pulling out crops. Um, I went and pulled up, had to pull up, um, well I took netting off beds, and I actually made a video of that for my students. Um, people are always talking about how horrible it is to take netting off beds. And anyway, I made a video of it. And then I bush hogged the beds. And I came in and I was so mad about something yesterday. See, it was so important. I can't even hardly remember what it was. Oh, now I remember. Anyway, I said, I'm going out to pull up irrigation. And it was a wrestling job. And so I have my moments for sure. Anyway, you know what, y'all? You know what you learn when you turn 60 like me? 
is there is just not much worth getting your britches in a knot over. I mean, truly. Um, you catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar. And somebody used to tell me that all the time, and that's not really the reason. You're not trying to catch flies, but I just have to remember, sometimes when I go to do something new, how everything the person is saying is totally like Chinese to me. I don't understand what they're talking about because I don't know the lingo. And that's how people are with Flower Farm. And so I do know that we have to, re that we have to just repeat ourselves a hundred times and nobody reads much anymore and anyway. So thank you for saying that. Pamela, I had plum sunflowers blooming this week. The white knight really complimented them. I'm telling you, the plum is one of my favorite. You would think the plum would be the chocolate sunflower, but it's not. It's the two-tone yellow with brown brushed on it. Really, really a beautiful guy. Cindy, loving my flowers that are blooming because of the gift of Lisa and the team at the Gardener's Workshop. Thank you, Cindy. At this time of the year, y'all can't say that enough. <laughs> it's... But y'all, I wanna tell you that our team is growing. Um, we have 14 people now that work between our online course platforms and our warehouse. Um, and then there's just three of us here at the farm, but everybody also works at the warehouse. So it's a total, there is so much excitement going on. On um, Val's course comes out Sunday, that'll be live. And that just ends a lot of the behind the scenes work once it's up. Um, and I'm working on a great new project and um, of course our flower farming schools enrollment and florist school and farmer florist school enrollment all comes this fall so there's just so much good stuff happening around here and it's just really hard for me to keep up Mel is asking is it possible to start perennials like in echinacea and ignops from seed or better to buy plants and root cuttings. So I would definitely say 100%, it depends on the specific plant that you're talking about. But I will also say that perennials are typically a little slow growers. Like I can remember I started Enops, and that is definitely something that you would want. First off, if it's a perennial in your zone, that means you should definitely fall plant it, right? That means instead of waiting until spring, <coughs> To let it grow up so it'll bloom the following season. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. <coughs> I think I inhaled some soil. Um, Sorry, y'all. This made me think of something bad. Um, with the enops, it would be so much smarter when you're seed starting perennials to start them in the summer and plant them in the fall. You almost knock a whole season out. That way they become established in the fall, they go through winter doing that, then they hit the ground running the following spring. But with that said, if you don't need a vast number of plants, I would definitely buy transplants because it just takes longer. I mean, if you're, I mean, I've started Enops, it did take a long time, I've never grown Echinacea, um, but you can go either way, it just depends on how much time you have. That's what it boils down to. Stacy, you put cool flower seeds in the freezer. Um, yes. So you can put, so yes, Stacy, you got a cool season, hardy annual seed collection. Um, you just, you, but first, I just can't tell y'all enough how much the, the desiccant um, makes it. And the desiccant you can use over and over. And there's actually, if you go online, I don't think it tells you on the packet. You can, like, dry it out. Um, we don't do that just because I have access to new ones, typically. You can dry it out and reuse it again if it retains, if it absorbs any moisture. Um, so you put the seeds in the bag, put a desiccant, and then three days later, then you put it in the freezer. And that's beneficial to all seeds because think about it, they're in the cold freezer, then you bring them out to start them, they think, oh, winter's over, right? It just helps them. Sorry, y'all, I'm just looking for questions. <coughs> all right, Christy says, last two cell trays got put on the deck today. All right, last farmer's market on October 2nd, 
Red by Color Excel and Horizon. Excellent choices, I might say. And that is the other thing you need to think about is do you need, how late do you need sunflowers? If your market's over, why continue it on? I think the best advice that I learned from one of my students, actually, who um, I mentored her before she took courses, and um, I'm just, she is just really excelled. Emily of Fuggles Flowers, F U G G L E S flowers. You've got to follow her. She posts her weekly bouquets that she's taken out. Anyway, she has an ending date to her season. She doesn't just keep cutting flowers as long as they come and keep selling them. That helps her so much mentally. Like um, she said on her post, one of her posts this week, that she, this is the last planting for this season and that they'll be off from starting seed for like three or four weeks before they start working on cool flowers. So it really works well. All right, y'all, we're gonna strap on. I gotta put my little boots on here. I don't see any more questions. So Amy's saying she put six rows in her 36 inch bed, go for it. The closer together you put sunflowers, the smaller the blooms will be. And we're looking for a sunflower about that big. Do they ever flower the first year? Or do they just get established and flower the second? Um, I don't know sure which one. You'd really have to look that up because it really can vary from variety to variety. You were asking about the perennials. Um, but yes, what Amy says is right. If you start them in the summer, plant them in the fall, they get well established and then they hit the spring like they've already had a whole season. So you cut off a little bit of time. All right, gang. So let me put my boots on. You'll see why, because I tilled the area that we're gonna do this in. And I don't wanna fill my shoes with boots. I mean, with soil and my, my boots are full of debris. I just um, slid my foot in. All right, so I'm gonna put my, sounds like my husband is outside with the mower. He doesn't know I'm coming outside, so we'll just have to take it. All right, gang, so I have my thing on. I'm gonna take you guys with me. How's that? And maybe that wasn't him. All right, so I'm gonna turn you around so you're not looking at my mug. Sometimes I have to stop and think, look at all those sunflowers. Remember how I started um, a bunch that we're planting out in a big field, not our cut flower ones. All right, let's go back here and see what we got. Oh, he is mowing back here. But y'all don't need to hear me. You're just gonna watch me. There's my truck, another pallet of fertilizer to, that came from the warehouse. He's mowing his, um, his gravel of grass. All right, gang. So I'm gonna turn you around so that you can see me. And I'm gonna let you, whoop, you don't wanna see him. Let's see what you're seeing. So this is where I'm gonna plant. I hope I have enough seed in here to do it. So, this is the spreader and it's full of seed and it's got a little lever right here and I just pull it back y'all. I mean, there is no real setting. It does have numbers on here. I pull it about halfway and then based on how fast you turn this lever and so I'll walk down. You won't be able to see very much, but when I'm coming back, you'll be able to see me, okay?
y'all and just like that we're done let me bring you up here I know this thing can get taller there it is so just that quick we're done and so now I'm just gonna run over that with the tiller the rain's coming tonight and tomorrow and hopefully we're gonna have buckwheat growing here this is where um, there actually hasn't been a cash crop planted here all season it was in um, winter rye and then we silage tarped it and I just barely tilled the surface of this and um, so we're just trying to improve the soil back here so friends this is always how many times can one expect to harvest from a single snap plant? Totally depends, Jackie, on um, the growing conditions and the grower. Um, we definitely get 15 to 18 stems off of one snap plant that's been fall planted, wintered over as a baby plant. It starts blooming in spring and it will go up until about, just depends on our weather, but you can get quite a few. But again, it depends on the experience of the grower. That's from great growing conditions. Um, so it just really depends. So Amy's asking, what's my favorite cool flower? My favorite flower is the one that's in a bucket, harvested and ready to be sold. They're all my favorites. Sorry, all my little tripod's kind of vibrating. Carla, I guess it's going to depend on which flower and what variety, but for Echinacea, oh, so she's good helping our friend out that ask. Cindy, you communicated clearly. We're just thick. No, and, you know, I understand um, farmers want access to florists, so that's what that group the Florist Farmer Connection page, and we're working on a really great tool so that people can find each other. You know what, like florists can put where they're located and farmers are gonna put where they're located and people can connect that way. Um, that'll be coming in the coming weeks. We're just so busy, y'all. I mean, my poor sister is so backlogged in making graphics and images and stuff anyway. Um, so yeah, I understand everyone's fascination with the opposite of the other side of the business but we really wanted to create a space that people could talk amongst themselves. Um, can't buckwheat blossoms be used in arrangements? I can't imagine why. They're small, they're insignificant. Um, I've never done it, um, and they are just pretty small. But, you know, to each their own. And, you know, here's the other thing. I am a huge believer in not making your bouquets and the flowers you're selling look like weeds. Um, and I'm not saying a buckwheat looks like a weed, but people tend to gravitate to things that grow like that. And y'all, we're supposed to be professionals. Um, and so you wanna be sure that you're presenting a professional product. So you just wanna be sure to not go for that weedy look. If there is a bunch of something, especially this time of the year, people are out there cutting things they maybe should or shouldn't. And if people see it growing in the ditches and they see it in your bouquet, they're gonna assume you're cutting everything from ditches. I'm serious. We hear it all the time. Is millet a one-time crop, one harvest it's done? Um, no, well, it depends on which millet it is. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. Um, so limelight millet, which really isn't very available right now, is a multi stem, so is purple majesty, do you prefer perennial flocks or annual? I do not grow flocks at all, so I cannot comment on that. How many times can you harvest from a seed? I've already answered that. All right, friends, this is my last question. I'm getting off here. Just wanted to, oh, thank you, Sharon. Just wanted to thank you so much. Looking forward to Monday night, Cool Flowers. Yeah, y'all, if you want to attend live, the request um, link is at the head of this post. Um, seven o'clock Monday night I'll be chit-chatting about just some cool flower reminders tips and like how you don't let this heat suck the profit out of spring and that's what happens to most people so all right friends I'm gonna go plant some more buckwheat in other spots get on my tractor and um, 
see what's for dinner. Ciao.